Greetings, everyone. I am Rain Ronald C. Bercasio. And I'm Lawrence Del Silazorda. And we are proud to present a stock analysis, analysis of, of SM Prime Holdings Incorporated. Before we formally begin with the stock analysis, let us first have an introduction to the Philippine investment climate. So as of 2014, there is a less than 1 million Filipinos that are invested in the stock market. So to be exact, there are 640,665 accounts. So this is from the 2014 Stock Market Investor Profile Report of the Philippine Stock Exchange, the data of which came from a survey of 18 online, online brokerage firms in the country. So um, we can see that uh, from 2013, there is a rise of 9.4% of stock brokerage accounts. So from 2013, we have 585,562, and then up to 2014, 64665 as presented earlier. So there is a rise of 9.4%. Unfortunately, unfortunately, if we are to compare this figure to the Philippine population in 2014, it wouldn't account to even a percent of the population. So we can conclude that the Filipinos are still in the sidelines when it comes to investing in the stock market. So here is a table of a number of um, stock traders and investors in the Philippines. So this data is from Pinoy Manito. So we have here the figures as presented earlier, but we can just proceed to the percentages. So as of 2014, there is a 9.4% growth, but compared to 2013, there is an 11.4%. So there is a, a downward trend, a downward trend. But if we are to look at another trend, which is the total online stock trading accounts, we can see the progress of the, of the online trading in the Philippines because it's, it's really growing. So from 2009, we only have 28,261, but now in 2014, we have 174,592. So if we are also to look at the percentages, it is continuously growing. So here are other, um, other um, data and then here are the active accounts. So as of 2014, there are 33.6% active accounts. So as a highlight for the forthcoming ASEAN integration, the PSE eyes a 2016 ASEAN link up with the ASEAN integration. So the purpose of this ASEAN link up is to have a single asset class. So as of today, so the PSE, the Indonesia Stock Exchange, as well as the two equity markets in Vietnam, so Hanoi Stock Exchange and Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange have yet to join the trading link. So what are we waiting for? So next slide please. So we are looking forward to our Securities and Exchange Commission in completing a tie-up with IOSCO. So IOSCO develops and implements and promotes adherence to internationally recognized standards for securities regulation for securities and regulation. So once the SEC has a tie-up with IOSCO already, and then, that, uh, as according to Mr. Sikat, that would be a good condition for us to evaluate this link up. So next slide, please. So what is the challenge? So according to Mr. Hans B. Sikat, the President and CEO of PSE, so the challenge for this ASEAN link up is collaborative competition. So what the country wants is that we are going to grow independently with this ASEAN link up. So Hans Sikat is looking forward to this ASEAN and then we can grow as, a, as, an, as an investment. Now let us have a discussion of some selected Philippine economic indicators beginning with the Philippine GDP growth rate. So the Philippines has a status of an emerging economy. In recent years, the country has been steadily growing, growing mainly due to inflow of foreign direct investment and remittances. So as we can see, the Philippines is a remittance-driven economy, which is why um, it has uh, this remittance-driven has a significant factor in the growth of the Philippines. So the Philippines is also the world's largest center for PPO. And now let us proceed to the Philippine balance of trade. So the Philippines has been running annual trade deficits due to high imports of raw materials and intermediate goods. In 2013, the biggest trade deficits were recorded with Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, and South Korea, while the biggest trade surpluses with Japan, Hong Kong, and the United States. Now let us have 
the Philippine unemployment rate. So in the Philippines, the unemployment rate measures the number of people who are actively looking for a job as a percentage of the labor force. So as we can see from uh, January 2016, there is an increase of 0 0.01, of 0 0.1, because from 5.7 to 5.8. So if we are to connect this to the to the investment climate in the Philippines, the higher the unemployment rate, of course, the lower the investment because um, there is uh, the, the purchasing power of the Filipinos and their capacity to invest is lessened. And also, let us have the inflation rate of the Philippines. So in the Philippines, the most important categories in the consumer price index are food, non-alcoholic beverages, housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. So the food and non-alcoholic beverages accounts for 39% of total weight. And then for the housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, we have 22%. And for transportation, we have 8%. The index also includes health, which is 3%, education, 3%, clothing and footwear, 3%, communication 2% and recreation and culture 2%. So inflation inflation in its nature is not bad because if we are having a deflation that's something bad because the economy is running low. So here is um, um, a presentation of the inflation rate in the Philippines. And lastly, we have the PSE index. So according to bloomberg.com, so the year to date returns of the Philippine Stock Exchange is 5.61%. Let us now begin with the fundamental analysis of SMPH. Allow me to discuss the corporate profile of SMPH. Did you know that SMPH has the largest integrated property developers in Southeast Asia? It offers innovative and sustainable lifestyle cities with the development of malls, residences, offices, hotels, and convention centers. In 2013, SM Group consolidated the real estate subsidiaries and real estate assets under one single li listed entity, SM Prime Holdings Incorporated. So the SM Prime Holdings Incorporated was incorporated in the Philippines in 1994. It started as a mall developer and operator and grew to be the biggest retail shopping center developer and operator in the Philippines. So, the SMPH has 49 malls inside and outside Metro Manila. It has also five shopping malls in China, totally 7 million square meters of gross floor area. In the Philippines, they have a total of 15,986 tenants and 1,408 tenants in China. So the other components of SMPH are Number one, SM Development Corporation, which is a residential business component that sells affordable condominium units. And second one is the Commercial Property Group, which, the S which is the SM Prime's commercial business unit and engaged in the development of leasing and office buildings in Metro Manila. So the following key executives are Hansi, uh, Nai. Peg Ong, Harley C, Luisa Angeles, and Jose Marie Banson. The board members are Henry C. Jr., Hans C., Jose Huisha, Henry C. Sr., and Gregorio K. Laico. The executive committees are for the audit committee, we have Jose Huisha Jr., for compensation committee, we have Gregorio K. Laico. And for the nominating committee, we have Joselito Sibayan. Another part of the fundamental analysis is the discussion of some industry qualitative factors. So, some of the qualitative factors that I am about to discuss is our politics, economics, social cultural, technology, and eco environment. So as to politics, definitely the reforms of the Philippine leaders, especially with the upcoming elections, may affect the stability of the country and can likewise affect the expansion plans of SMPH. So as to economics, the Philippine GDP is driven by consumer spending, which, is, which greatly contributes to the volume of sales of SMPH. And now as to, as to social cultural, 
Filipino buyers are becoming smart buyers. So, who focus on food and necessities. So, SMPH may not be directly affected by this buying behavior, but this may affect its tenants whose total sales for their fees are based on percentage of their income or through a fixed rent monthly basis. Now, on as to technology, e-malls are slowly penetrating the consumer market. So, most of us are familiar already with Lazada. So, that is an example of an e-mall. With this trend, consumers may tend to shift their shopping behavior which can have an adverse effect on the performance of SMPH. Now, as to the eco-environment, SMPH should always secure an Environmental Compliance Certificate or ECC so for their expansion plans because if they fail to do so, all their expansion plans will be put on hold. So as of, um, as of their history, so they've never failed to comply with this ECC certificate or EC certificate. The next qualitative factor would be the competition, definitely. So the primary competitors of SMPH would be Ayala Land and Robinson's Land. So we will have um, a more detailed discussion of this later on. So how about the secondary competitors would be the no-fast shopping complexes. Example, the Tutuban, Center Mall, and then Green Hills. Because they offer cheap products. And as to international market entry, SMPH expanded internationally through an acquisition of three shopping malls in China through a share swap agreement. So as of today, SMPH gained foothold in China's fast-growing economy. So a platform for long-term growth outside the Philippines. Let us now proceed to the quantitative analysis of SMPH based on the figures presented in their financial statement. So, as of March 25, 2016, to be exact, for 29 p.m. from Bloomberg up, the the P/E ratio of SMPH is 22.82222. The price book price to book ratio is 3.0444, and the price to sales ratio is 9.0317. So for Price to earnings ratio, the lower the better. So the price to book value, price to book ratio uh, should be one or less than one. And to price to sales ratio, it should be less than three. It's, it should be less than three. So here is the comparison of SMPH versus the other companies aligned with the industry and the PSE market. So this time, let us compare the figures of SMPH to its competitors, namely Ayala Land, Robinson's Land, and the PSE market. So PE ratio is for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per share earnings. So for SMPH, we have 22.82. With Ayala Land, we have 29.70. For Robinson's land, we have 19.64 and for PSE market, we have 30.83. So the investors prefer uh, 15 to 18 uh, price to earnings. Uh, here we, we have the SMPH as the moderate, moderate, uh, moderate area. Ayan. Uh, then... For the PS is similar to PE ratio. The PS ratio measures the price of a company's stock against its annual sales instead of earnings. So the investors prefer for PS to be 3 or less than 3. So for SFH we have 9.03, for Ayala Land we have 5.18, and RLC we have 5.73. PSE, we have 3.36. So, we can say that the market beats the SMPH because SMPH has a higher uh, PS ratio, which is not uh, a good indicator to in for, uh, no, not, not a good indicator for the investors to invest uh, if they see the PS ratio. For PP ratio, 
it is the ratio of market price to its book value. So it is a general gen finder. If the PV ratio is one or less than one, we can say that it is a screaming buy or the investor should buy immediately the shares of the company. So for S&P we have 3.04, for Ayala Land we have 3.98, for Robinsons we have 2, and for Market we have 2.12. So we can say that uh, the Robinsons beat our bet, bet. Uh, SMPH because Robinsons has a nearer ratio for price, price to book. For the ROA, SMPH is the leading stock with 6.88%. This is a good indicator of proper utilization of assets. For the ROE, uh, the SMPH has, is in the middle of Ayala Land, which is the leading, and RLC, which, which has the lowest percentage in ROE. And, uh, for profit margin, SMPH has the largest percentage of 38.94%. It means that for every peso, uh, the SMPH earns 0.38 or 0.39 centavo per peso. And for debt to equity, we have the we have further discussion in the next slide. SMPH has a 50% debt ratio, which is a capital structure with moderate risk. This means that SMPH's liabilities are only half of its total resources and the other half is owned by its shareholders. All in all, 50% is a reasonable ratio that is also lower than the industry average. If this ratio goes beyond 50%, SMPH will have difficulty in obtaining funds because creditors will not supply them due to the risk of not being repaid. For the growth of assets, we have a three-year period. <coughs> the continuous growth of assets at a rate of 20% is a good indicator for it means that the business is continuously expanding. On the other hand, a return of almost 5% on assets can be considered a bit lower for SMPH. Still, compared to industry averages, the SMPH is at the exact level. This should also be considered by the investor. For the profit margins, the gross and net profit margins of SMPH are higher, which are good stock indicators. With this, the probability of the business is secured because it is able to recover its cost and earn a lot. This in indicates efficiency on the part of the company. Also, the company is doing well against its competitors because SMPH's rate is higher than the uh, industry averages. For the return on equity or ROI, as a rule of thumb, ROI should be within 15 to 20 percent. This signifies how SMPH utilizes the funds provided by its shareholders. Nonetheless, upon comparing it with the industry averages, SMPH is performing well. Let us now have the technical analysis of SMPH beginning with the trend. So the trend here is the middle line which signifies uh, sideways for the Side general trend. Yes, for the general trend. And for the short run, uh, beginning uh, estimated uh, the third week of Feb January, uh, as of today, we have a upward trend. Okay. Now let us proceed to the Japanese candlesticks. So just a quick review. When it's a green, it's an upward trend. And when it's a red candlestick, it's a downward trend. So as of the moment, we can see here an evening star. So what is an evening star? An evening star is composed of three candlesticks. So the first candlestick is a long green candle, which is bullish. And then we have here an, a doji, an almost doji. And then we have here a candlestick that is red. So it, so this kind of pattern signifies a market reversal. So if we are to base our conclusion in the Japanese candlesticks, the investor can, we can suggest to the investor that he must prepare to sell. Because 
the prices are about to go down. Now let us proceed to the support and resistance. So for the for the support and resistance, uh, um, as of December 14, we have a support, and at the beginning of the year 2016, we have uh, an upward trend of the prices. So here is the support, and here is the resistance. So uh, in in the third week of uh, in the second week of January. Uh, Prices go down and uh, and the the previous support line was broken. The previous line was broken and here is the new support 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 line and and then it was then again broken during the third week of January and then beginning of the third week of January uh, beginning of the third week of January it continuously uh, goes up. Right. And now, how about the simple moving average? Simple moving average, uh, as I said earlier, this moving average is the middle line. Uh, as of today, the prices are above the, uh, no, above the moving average. So it signifies a bullish trend. Correct. Now let us proceed to the Bollinger Bands. So during the beginning of March, there is a narrowing phase of the Bollinger Bands. And then, beginning that point, there has been a breakout. So meaning, if there is a breakout, and then the width of the, or the yeah, the area of the Bollinger Bands is is wide, meaning the prices are volatile. So it's subject, it is subject to a lot of fluctuations. But we can see that the prices are already on the upper band of the Bollinger. And as we all know, when the <coughs> prices tend to touch the upper band of the Bollinger's, the prices tend to go down. So again, it supports our conclusion that it is already best to sell because it's the prices are about to go down already based on the technical indicators. Now we also have um, another indicate, a technical indicator is the price versus volume. So we refer to other information coming from Bloomberg and then according to Bloomberg, the the volume of SMPH is beginning to go down. But as we can see, the prices are still high. So what does that indicate? So it indicates a volume dry, dry up. And when, price are, when prices are high and the volume is down, it's, uh, it's an indication of market top, which is, uh, which is a condition or a state where it's really best to sell. Okay. So, now let us proceed to RSI. RSI, uh, Relative Strength Index. So in the 14 week RSI, uh, we have the 20 as the floor and the 80 as the ceiling. So as of today, we are seeing that it it is merely touching the ceiling. So it Over is what? Uh, it is near the overbought region. So it is really to good to say that the investors are should prepare to sell. Okay. So again, as a quick summary, so based on our previous technical indicators, it's really good to sell in the SMPH. Now after the RSI, let's proceed to MACD. So the MACD, uh, we have two lines here. If the both lines are above zero, it is bullish trend. Okay. It is in a bullish trend. And a crossover is about to happen. And the black line here is the signal. I didn't know the, the, red. the red line, sorry. The red line is and the MACD is above the signal, it is a bullish trend also. And, uh, but we can see that a downward reversal is about to happen. Yes. And also, if we are to look at the oscillators, there is already a red oscillator here. So it's really an um, um, indication of a downward, 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 downward reversal. Correct. And now let's proceed to the ADX. So ADX for green, for green, these are the buyers, right? Yes. And then for the red, we have the sellers. So so we can say that the buyers are have are have uh, are greater than the sellers. sellers. Okay. And now of course for the awesome. For the awesome uh, the bars are above zero so it is in a bullish trend. Yes. Yeah, bullish trend. And also it's still green. So but based on uh, mainly based on RSI based on RSI based on Bollinger 
my conclusion is that SMPH, it's for our, our suggestion to the investor is it's best to sell, to sell or prepare to sell. This ends our stock analysis of SMPH. I am Ray Ronald C. Bercasio from BSA 3-1. And I'm Lawrence Lincel Lazarna also from BSA 3-1. Thank you very much.